good morning. Good morning, Slush. This is Startup Station, and I'm Anna, and this is Dan, Daniel. And we're going to host you to today. We have amazing speakers coming. Yeah, Daniel, how was your morning? It was good. I had a lot of slush in my face, which because was it, horrible. It was horrible. But we are really happy that slush finally came because it answers the brand promise eventually. Hey, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks a lot for being here together yeah. um, at slush. Uh, how was your morning? Slushy as well. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of my fans. But uh, yeah, very happy to, to be here. It's super exciting. Awesome. How about you? Thank you. Good. Thank you for having us, Daniel. Awesome. Let's uh, dive directly into it. Mm -hmm. We're going to explore the opportunities mm -hmm. and new models for founders. Mm -hmm. And first of all, maybe you can just start off by explaining a little bit um, about Founders Factory and uh, right after maybe about First Minute Capital. Yeah, sure. So, so Founders Factory, we, um, we wanted to have a new way to accelerate companies. We looked at lots of accelerators worldwide and uh, our co-founder, Brent Hoberman, always felt that he wouldn't join an accelerator if he was building a new business today. Uh, so how could we create something which had a much bigger impact on, on a founder's business? Um, we thought key to that is having corporates who can really, really help and bring credibility and bring opportunities to startups. Um, so we went out and, and raised a, a lot of capital from uh, L'Oreal, EasyJet, Aviva, The Guardian, Holtzbrink, uh, and a big Chinese conglomerate who covers six uh, kind of strategic sectors. Um, and they're very, very active in helping the startups that, that we make investments into. Um, and the other key thing is we felt that the traditional accelerator model of mentors kind of coming in and helping startups uh, isn't that effective. You get conflicting advice and you don't always get that kind of operational support that you might need as a founder. So we went and hired 60 people. So we have 60 people full time in Founders Factory across growth, data science, partnerships, uh, product, design, engineering. Uh, and they're dedicated to supporting the, the startups that, that we invest in. On top of that, we actually thought if we have these corporates and we have the insights that they sit on, uh, as well as the assets and capabilities they have for distribution or uh, for scaling businesses, could that be a new way to create businesses and understand what businesses we should and could build? Um, so we also have this incubator model where every year we come up with 12 new business ideas, uh, we build them over a six month period, and then we go out and find founding teams to, to run those companies and, and to, to make their own. Awesome, some exciting mix of corporate innovation and acceleration. Um, that sounds super interesting. Um, Spencer, maybe you can just give us a brief uh, introduction to First Minute Capital. Of course, a much less exciting structure than Founders Factory, <laughs> but First Minute is a, a seed fund based in London. Uh, we launched this summer, and as mentioned, the majority of our investors in First Minute are entrepreneurs. So we have about 100 uh, investors in the fund, of which 50 are entrepreneurs, of which 20 uh, nine, I think, have, have built uh, billion dollar tech businesses. Uh, the institutions behind First Minute are Atomico, the, the latest stage fund that I'm sure you all know, uh, and Tencent. And so really we at First Minute are global in outlook, we'll be European focused, so we think about 70% of our investments will be in Europe. Uh, the 30% outside of Europe will always look to follow a local uh, venture lead in that in that area, predominantly the U.S. and Israel, um, and you know I think for us it was a, a critical piece being part of a wider group in terms of Founders Factory being a critical element and also Founders Forum, which is an event for entrepreneurs in London, uh, and, and then having that entrepreneurial DNA at the heart of the fund was was the other thing that we felt we could help turbocharge seed stage founders uh, in Europe. Awesome, cool. Um, Different models, but both mm -hmm. definitely exciting. Um, so what excites you at this very moment? What are the industries that you're most excited about that you, you know, invest in, that you really uh, have a deep look into at this moment? Do you want to go first? You go. Um, I, I think for us, we try and invest in areas where we can bring some kind of competitive advantage mm -hmm. um, through the corporates that, that we have. So we think new technologies like AI, where you have great technical founders, but not always the data sets that you need to actually apply those uh, algorithms and technologies to a particular industry. Um, so we can kind of bring that with, say, flight data from EasyJet or claims data from uh, Aviva, a large insurer, and actually really help those technical entrepreneurs to kind of leverage that data to, to build out their algorithms, but then also to kind of productize and, and get their businesses into market. So we see huge opportunity there. Um, 
Another thing we, we're fascinated about is how can we disrupt our own investors over the next five years? Um, so we look at lots of different kind of blockchain solutions for all six of the industries that we work in. Um, can you replace the, the GDS system with blockchain for, for flights? Can you uh, change how remittances and insurance works uh, in, in financial services? Can you innovate around kind of supply chain uh, for large FMCG businesses? Is there a, a better, more fairer kind of content syndication network uh, for publishers if you put that on the blockchain? So we're kind of, we have these verticals that fascinate us, but we're trying to think of how the new technologies that are emerging can, can affect all of them. Um, and so looking for startups basically that, that are in those kind right. of I mean, realms. It's not just blockchain, blockchain, blockchain. It has to make sense, you know, as yes. well. And like how yeah. So we're not, we're not really like crypto experts, but we're more yeah. thinking what are the like business model applications or business model innovations that could be brought about by it. Right. Cool. And what excites you at the moment? We're genuinely agnostic. We, we yeah. want the flexibility to look at anything on the basis that if a founder walks in and we think that he or she is building something brilliant and exciting, we want to have the flexibility to, to back them. Um, I think you know, we, are, we are spending quite a lot of time on blockchain, blockchain, blockchain um, as a team uh, and learning. We wouldn't claim to be experts at all. Uh, but our first investments have been across well, a, a cybersecurity business for medical devices uh, out of Israel, uh, a blockchain business uh, focused on, uh, on the insurance space that, that George knows well. Uh, we've looked uh, at an AR business, uh, a SaaS business for SMEs. So it, it, it is genuinely a range. We, we've dipped into the software for autonomous vehicles uh, race. Uh, so, you know, it's obviously a very competitive space there, but we, we think we've found a brilliant team to support. So it's, uh, it's broad. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so independent of what kind of businesses you invest in, mm -hmm. um, both of you have a lot of experience talking to founders, early stage mm -hmm. founders, and I think a lot of people here in the audience are founders themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so when it comes to pitching um, to you guys or in general, mm -hmm. what are some of the do's and don'ts that you have experienced uh, that you can share here, some advice um, with us? Um, I've got a, a couple. One, uh, I don't like it always when founders pitch, and obviously, it can often be a great presentation, but you get to slide 20 or whatever, and you still don't know what the product is. Uh, I always think that's a, a big failing of a lot of founders. Um, make sure people really understand that product first up, and then you can kind of build the story ar around that. Uh, another thing that we often see is founders saying that there's no competition. They're the only person doing that. Um, that probably means they might be wrong. Usually, either someone else has had the same idea, but it's more about how do you have the right credibility and why are you the right person and the right team to, to, to make that idea more effective than, than other people might be able to. So, so those are kind of two do's and don'ts, I guess, from, from our side, from, from cool. what we see. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, I think you have to be authentic. I don't believe in tricks, whether they're kind of stylistic. I think one practical thing is we do see a lot of founders looking to raise seed stage money, saying it'll give them nine or 12 months runway. For most seed funds will say 18 months should be an absolute minimum just on the basis that things will go wrong and you, 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 know, you, you need that extra space. Um, and then I think you know, all good founders don't want to be fundraising. They want to be spending time on their product and therefore they should be pushing investors and making them work to timelines. But I think there's also a way to do it and not to be erratic with that. And if you do set a deadline for a, for, for a VC or, or an investor, I think it needs to be a, a consistent one and a kind of reasonable one. So that balance of pushing, but not, not too much. I think maybe an, another one that uh, always really impresses me when we meet founders is when they have a really good understanding of what they don't know and mm -hmm. what are the really big challenges. Mm -hmm. And you know, they, they can be humble that they haven't figured them out yet, but they have two or three ideas for what they're going to try to try and validate or to try and uh, explore. And, and I think that's always really important when founders just kind of blithely say, it's all worked out. Uh, this is going to how it's be. I know, I know everything. That's always a bit of a red flag, because no, no one does. Um, so I think that, yeah, that humility is always quite, quite powerful so as well. You, you, you hear it. Uh, being authentic and honest, uh, both really important qualities uh, for, for founders. Um, another advice for founders that may be really important is because, I mean, you have both different models, and there are so many different things in terms of funding right now, right? From crowdfunding to acceleration. Um, investment, VCs. So what are the things that uh, early stage founders should take into consideration when choosing the right, the right path to getting funded, basically? In terms of the types of investors or? Yes, exactly. The types of yeah. models. Yeah, I mean, I think um, for the, the, what we hope to bring founders is a 
degree of additional connectivity and, and, and credibility. That's not meant to rhyme, but um, I think the, the, the idea that we can actually help with a couple of choice introductions that are high level, that are responsive, and that could be transformative to their businesses. So I think us understanding how we can be useful is a really important part of why we'll invest. We'll often not invest if it's not clear why the founder wants us first minute as an investor. Um, so I think just having a really frank uh, dialogue about saying, why would you, how would we work together if we were to invest tomorrow? Um, and I think that's often a network play in our case. Okay. Yeah, I don't think uh, joining an accelerator should be a rite of passage for, for any startup founder going on a journey. Um, I think you should be really clear about what you want to get out of a program. Um, a lot of programs we see are, are super generic um, and can maybe raise the profile of a startup for a short amount of time and get you to a demo day, but does that really change your business and does that really um, actually impact the company in a tangible way? So we only really encourage the, we'll try and bring the startups in for our accelerator where we know we can really help and we've got some kind of strategic advantage we can provide from different members of our team or something from the corporates where they, we know the corporates are going to help and then we can kind of propel that startup to the next stage. And then we think it's a great offering. But you know, we wouldn't back a, a business, say, in the autonomous vehicle space because we don't really have that many competitive advantages we could bring to that startup. And I'd probably discourage from a startup for joining for that reason. Um, so I think founders should always say, you know, if I'm joining an accelerator, an incubator, or raising seed money, how can they boost my company more than just the little bit of cash or the, the, the brand? Exactly. Look at the overall picture. Um, what are actually the benefits uh, you can get out of um, the investment? Um, so before I dive into the questions, and thank you guys for supplying with, uh, us with those questions here. Um, the last question to both of you, what do you actually look in uh, or what do you look for in an early stage founding team? So what are the most important characteristics, criteria that you assess your founding team? I, I think it's hard to say anything you know, super precise because it's hard to be generic, but you, a sense of just perseverance, a sense of hunger, and, and an understanding of why that founder is building that business. You know, I think that, that I go back to that word authentic, that sense of authenticity, because uh, inevitably it's going to be, it's such a hard thing to do to, to build a startup and to scale it, that feeling that they will go to extreme lengths uh, to make that business succeed. I think as an investor, uh, that's certainly one of the things you're looking for. And then I think at an early stage, it's maybe less of a characteristic and more of a momentum piece. I think you want to feel that you're looking for signals of, of momentum and credibility and, and whether it's the advisory board you've pulled together or the first angels who have come in or the first corporates you're working with or business development opportunities those it might not be huge in numbers the absolute numbers might be small but just those those signs of uh, of momentum I think are really important yeah well basically what he said <laughs> um, I think well, maybe what I'd add is uh, a kind of diversity of skill sets uh, and backgrounds mm -hmm. in, in teams um, we get a lot of like single founder applications, which we, we tend to mostly ignore, not in every case. Um, and often you see startups with kind of .ai in their, in, on their website, but kind of no AI experts in the team. And um, you just want to make sure that teams have the kind of core capabilities to get that product to market. Um, you can't have everyone in your team at the start, but I think trying to like build the right skill sets to kind of complement each other as a, as a kind of core founding team that's when we've seen the best successes of, of companies that we've either built ourselves or, or invested in and accelerated. And I think one final one that George and I both share is can founders attract brilliant people to work with them? Uh, and, and that idea of, you know, would we go and work for them? Or what, you know, what will their 10th employee like? I think those kind of uh, abilities are key as well. Having, having an A player team, right? I guess, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah. So we've somewhat answered the question of how you scout startups or what you look mm. for. Um, but now, what are, uh, yeah, what are the benefits of working with Founders Factory? And maybe we can also uh, mention that uh, for about first minute capital compared to a traditional VC firm. Um, yeah, so maybe from, from our incubator side, um, we, we're building 12 companies a year, that means we're creating 30, 36 new founders a year um, who we become a co-founder for, for them basically. And those, those people that come in, they come with 
They arrive and there's a, an MVP, which is fully functioning. There's a, your first customer from one of our corporates or one of our external uh, corporates that we work with. There's some traction. We've got some funding behind it. Um, and there's you know, 60 to 70% of the business uh, there and available for that founding team. So we think we can uh, help new people who want to be become entrepreneurs become entrepreneurs more easily um, and, and create businesses faster than they'd be able to do on their own. Um, and then on the accelerator side, I think getting that first customer um, or getting that proprietary data set can be incredibly hard. And we've created our model essentially so that um, existing startups can, can do that more quickly and more easily uh, and gain that credibility from having one of those big brands on, on, on their slide deck. And, and we've seen great success stories of how just by getting that, that one customer initially can, can really open the doors to, to many others. Uh, this kind of startup world's a bit of a momentum game, so it is, if yeah. you can get those initial points uh, of, of credibility to start, it, it really, really helps. So that, that's kind of our, our main offering for the different models. That's where you have your advantage. Awesome. Is there anything to add from uh, First Minute Capital? Like, is, what's the key if you had to choose one thing that you sure. do differently? What would it be? I think you know we're a, we're a new fund. We launched this summer, and I think uh, our co-founder Brent shows and his age uh, by referencing an advert from me, Avis. Which, and, oh, uh, yes. This is very rude, of course, <laughs> to, uh, to, to interrupt your uh, lovely discussion, but we have to move <laughs> on. Yeah, of course. So thank you, yeah. Spencer. Thank you, George. Thank, thank you. you so much thank being so here much. with us tonight. Let's thank give you, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, Spencer and George. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you.